Welcome to those of you who are watching from uh, the UK, specifically Ireland. Uh, I'm meteorologist Joe Chaffee. Uh, for those of you who don't know uh, me, I am uh, a New York City area meteorologist and have been for the last 30 years uh, on uh, local television here. And uh, I continue to do that. And uh, we live stream every day here, right here on my YouTube channel. So uh, if uh, you uh, like what you see, uh, by all means, uh, hit the subscribe button. Uh, really would appreciate it. And you can join in the conversation uh, in the chat. And we have Ophelia as a major hurricane. This is the sixth major hurricane. And it is very rare to have a major hurricane out at 35 degrees, almost 35 degrees north latitude and longitude at about 27 degrees west. The Azores are the islands on the map here right to the north. And you can see Ophelia has a well-formed eye uh, that um, symmetric look to it. Uh, even though water temperatures here are not warm enough to really support a Category 3, the dynamics in the atmosphere are exceptional. Uh, it is uh, quite cool in the highest layers of the atmosphere, and this is allowing for basically a, a warm pocket to form for Ophelia to sit in and, uh, and generate uh, energy to the level of a category three and it's going to pass south and east of the Azores although there may they may get tropical storm force winds it probably will get tropical storm force winds on this island here that is out to the southeast the island of Santa Maria and then northeast northeast bound from there heading for uh, Ireland and that will happen on Monday and uh, when we take a look I'm going to show you the GFS model of this now Ophelia is going to gradually make a transition over uh, into a powerful non-tropical cyclone uh, almost uh, yeah, really like a winter type cyclone and if you look where in the lower left corner here is the representation of Ophelia uh, when we uh, start back and this is by uh, this is for 6 a.m. Sunday morning, Ireland and England time. Uh, it has that sort of concentrated ball of very, very strong winds uh, near uh, the circulation center. But as it, we move through time and it makes this transition over into a non-tropical storm, you'll see that the wind field spreads out. The yellow areas, uh, the areas in yellow, uh, and the uh, code here is on the, the legend is on the side here. These are winds and sustained uh, these are sustained winds, so the yellows are all gales, and the red areas are 40 knots or higher. The purple area is 52 knots or higher, and you can see that wind field spreads out. So this is typical of uh, systems that become uh, post-tropical or extra-tropical, and uh, that'll mean there'll be a larger area of gale force winds, but you won't have that very tight area of winds uh, in excess of 100 miles an hour. And when we uh, get to um, midnight uh, Monday morning, this is where it, the storm is. You can see it with respect to Ireland and England. It's about uh, 300 miles to the south, south uh, east of Ireland. And at uh, 6 a.m., we uh, have it uh, getting even closer. And by noon, uh, the storm is making landfall on the southwest coast of Ireland. And you can uh, see with the wind profile here, the uh, purple area is 50 knots or higher, touching uh, much of the south coast of Ireland. Uh, and then gradually, as it moves over the island, you start to see the strong winds spread into the waters between Ireland and England. So the west coast of England getting into gales. And then the low continues up into Scotland from there crossing uh, northeastward eventually into uh, Norway and Sweden and weakening and dissipating. So this is going to be a very, very powerful storm. You're going to see um, hurricane force wind gusts, uh, I would expect. Now, with re regards to rain from this, uh, usually with these systems, when they become uh, non-tropical in nature, the wind field, the rain uh, shield shifts westward. So while there will be some rain from this, the heaviest rains will likely pass to the west of Ireland, west of the storm tracks. I want to be really careful about that because if the storm tracks a little bit further to the east, uh, then uh, you're going to have more in the way of rain. But I think wind is going to be the biggest issue. Now, at the point of landfall, 
Uh, I'm going to pu pull up. I'm going to go back to that win map, and I'm going to pull up a, a few sp points uh, right along the south coast. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, uh, too bad. I was hoping that I would get a sounding. Oh, there we go. Uh, this is inland near where it moves uh, moves ashore. Uh, the latitude longitude plot here is 51, almost 52 north, 9.18 west, oh, and it has a uh, southwest wind. I'm sorry, a south southeast wind of 35 knots, uh, being uh, forecast for the surface wind at that particular point. Uh, but again, we can move this around. I'm going to see if I can get a sounding right on the coast. And here we have it right on the coast, away from the center. We have a south-southeast wind at 40 knots, just above the ground layer, um, up uh, at about 1,000 feet or so. Uh, there are 70-knot winds being uh, forecasted. And let me get a little bit closer to the low center. And just right along the coast, just offshore, 60-knot winds uh, being forecasted here at the point of landfall. So these are sustained winds, not gusts. So there will be gusts that are higher than that. Uh, Hurricane Debbie in 1961, I, I think for Ireland, goes down as the um, the, the storm that uh, will folks point back to because that was one that did something similar to this and uh, is remembered because it did cause uh, uh, quite a bit of damage to Ireland when it moved on through. Um, this system might be comparable to that. All, all of this is going to ultimately depend on the track. Uh, if it goes, the, the most ideal track at this point would be, of course, offshore to the, to the uh, west. Uh, uh, models have been kind of getting uh, concentrated over bringing it right across Ireland. Uh, some of the models literally bring it, split the island in half in terms of the actual track. And then eventually, again, uh, off the north coast uh, onto the coast of Scotland. So there will be gales for, for uh, Western England for sure, and probably even for the Eastern, uh, I'm sorry, for Eastern, uh, um, boy, I'm getting my East and West confused, the Western shores of England and also the Eastern shores and eventually into Scotland. This would be uh, Monday uh, late afternoon, evening, and into Monday night and early Tuesday. So I'm going to pause this right here and um, uh, we will uh, uh, go to the chat board and we'll uh, discuss this a bit further.